This edition of Mac Voices is brought to you by Smile, the makers of the brand new PDF Pen 6, PDF Pen Pro 6, and PDF Pen for iPad and PDF Pen for iPhone. Find out more about all the flavors of PDF Pen at smilesoftware.com. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Mac community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, one of my favorite new pieces of hardware is my transporter. But we haven't had an update of, of any kind from the folks at Transporter since Macworld, I believe. So it's it's about time to catch up a little bit. That's why I'm happy to welcome back Jim Sherhart of Transporter to talk about what's going on with some of the updates that they have coming real soon now, probably any second. Jim, it's great to see you. Thanks so much for being here. Yeah, great to be here, Chuck. Thanks again for having me on. Jim, I imagine you all have been a little busy, judging by what I've been seeing and coming down the way of software updates and all to my transporter and trying to pay attention to what you all are doing. But I have a little bird has told me that we're on the cusp of some major new revisions and updates. Yeah, we got some really good stuff coming. I guess it's the calm before the storm, right? So uh, it's been a while since we've been out talking about what we've got going on, but we've got really two major announcements we're going to be making here at, at the end of May, actually on the 29th. Um, the first one is that we'll be introducing version 2.0 of Transporter software. Um, and it's going to be a complete major revamp of the software. Um, I'll talk about some of the features and maybe why we did it. Um, so that's the first big announcement. And the second big announcement, which uh, I think a lot of your international audience is really going to appreciate, um, is that we're going to be also announcing that we're launching in Europe as well. So people that have had to go through extraneous means to try and get a, their hands on a transporter um, won't have to do that anymore if they're located in Europe. And obviously we're looking at other places internationally as well, um, but we're going to have the big news around Europe coming up on the 29th. It has to be a, a very fun kind of thing and yet frustrating, too, that there's this kind of demand and interest for the transporter everywhere, and you haven't been able to do some of this stuff until now to, to service Europe. Yeah. Yeah, frustrating for me, but very frustrating for our head of sales. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can only imagine. I can only uh, imagine. And, you know, honestly, the the demand on Kickstarter blew us away. I mean, we, we, we obviously had an inkling that, uh, that there's some good use cases that involve international usage. Um, but, uh, but the demand from Kickstarter and since has been amazing to the point where I think people are getting uh, a little bit cranky that uh, we haven't done something by now. But, you know, the reality is we could rush it over there and do a, do a crummy job of servicing those people. What we wanted to do is we wanted to make sure we had everything in place before we did the launch. So we've got distribution in place. We've got reverse logistics in place. We've got a support organization in place. Um, so when we announce on the 29th, we're not only going to be able to get the unit to them, but we're going to be able to make sure that we take care of them if they do run into any issues uh, with the unit as well. So um, it's a pretty big undertaking, but we're ready to go now. Speaking from personal experience, that's been one of the highlights, I think, of my transporter experience. Um, that I, Dave Hamilton and I had one little issue with a large file we were trying to move back and forth. We contacted Transporter Support, and within a day, I think, we had a new a new version of the software that addressed our bug specifically. Uh, not, and not just for us, I mean, pushed out to everybody. And that, sure. that really says a great deal about your team and their, and their dedication to what you're trying to accomplish there and make this truly an easy-to-implement personal cloud. Yeah, and I mean, that comes from the top down, right? Our CEO, Jeff Barrell, um, you know, he was the CEO and, and founder at Drobo as well. Um, and he is obsessed with, um, with driving incremental improvements to come up with a product that we'd all be really proud to have and own. Um, and so you, you're seeing the same thing here at Connected Data. Um, you know, if there's something that's standing in the way of this being an, uh, an excellent customer experience, um, he's going to be the first guy to say, we need to get this fixed. And so when you have that kind of, um, you know, that kind of direction coming from the top, um, it makes delivering a good product to people a lot easier to do. And so what you saw was kind of the outcome of that, right? Which is when Jeff sets a direction, you can get the troops all moving in the same direction really fast and, and we can get stuff done quickly. Not, you don't have a lot of bureaucracy in a, in a smaller company like Connected Data. And I really like the, the approach you're taking that up to this point, you've just let Europe 
be frustrated without a trans without access to the transporter or at least direct access so you could do it right so when they did get it it would have be the right kind of experience and they wouldn't just buy it and say oh mistake put it on the shelf and never use it and yeah. that that takes a lot of discipline to accomplish it does um, there's a lot of features we want to add in um, but we knew getting it to the folks in Europe and and getting this version 2.0 out were the right things to do first i mean you know, I can tell you we probably have a good idea what to do for version 3 and version 4 already, right? I mean, that'll change. But, I mean, there's just so much we can do with the product and the technology and where we want to take it. Uh, we just got to be disciplined about making sure that our current customers are having a great experience. Um, and that's the other thing, too. When the folks in Europe order the new product, they're going to get the version 2.0 software. You know, so that was another reason for kind of timing this so it made sense that, uh, that they had that best experience possible. Let's get to the good stuff. What's the good stuff? The yeah. good stuff. What's the two point version going to deliver for us? Yeah. So, um, as you mentioned, you know, we had a really successful Kickstarter. Um, we had a great reception at MacWorld. Um, we sold over a thousand in Kickstarter. We sold a few thousand more since. Um, and the great thing about getting all of those those sort of passionate users using the product very early in the life cycle is we've just got a tremendous amount of feedback. Um, it's just been great, and so. It became pretty clear to us that we did a lot of things really well, um, but there were a lot of people out there that said, you know, I'm a Dropbox user. Um, can you just make it work more like Dropbox? Um, and, you know, that was one of the other things. And there were some features and stuff that people brought up as well. Um, and we were blown away, quite honestly. You know, we knew, obviously, mobile was going to be a big thing. Um, and we were already working on the iOS app. But we were blown away by the amount of people that, that also were interested in an Android app. I mean, we knew it would be... A few people, but it's been a very large. It's been a larger audience and a more vocal audience than we expected. So, so there's four key things that that we've done in version 2.0. Um, the first and probably most important is it's going to function exactly like Dropbox. So, if somebody's a Dropbox user and they like the way Dropbox, you know, works and they're used to that interface, they're going to love Transporter. We were close before with 1.0, but 2.0 is exactly. So now you literally you install the software, you open up your Transporter folder and you drag and drop your stuff right into the transporter folder. You don't have to do anything in the web management. You don't have to set up any special folders ahead of time. It's literally drag and drop. And the beautiful thing is before with transporter, the way that we had constructed the software, it would make a copy of the data, which confused some people because Dropbox just doesn't move. And when I say it's exactly like Dropbox, it's exactly now. So drag and drop, it's going to be a move, um, and it's going to be an automatically synced file just like Dropbox. So for people that, that want Transporter to be like Dropbox, they're going to love that out-of-box behavior. Um, the other thing we implemented is full right-click functionality. People just want to be able to work in Finder and right-click and be able to share right from there. Um, you know, we had the sharing mechanism in the website, and it became clear that people want to be able to do it right from Finder. Um, so you can right-click on a folder now. You can share it right from there. It's going to pop open a dialog just like Dropbox where you enter somebody's email address and you're good to go. So there's no reason to ever go to the management site. Um, and then the third thing we did to make it more like Dropbox, and this is going to be a huge, huge win for a lot of people, is we now have the ability to email links of individual files. Um, I think people just love it for the convenience, but I think also um, a lot of people said, hey, I just want to share a few files with somebody. Do they really have to go and create an account and download and install your software? Um, the answer with version one was yes, and the answer now is absolutely not, because you can just right-click on any file and email a link to that file to people. So that's the first thing we've done is made those big enhancements to make it look just like Dropbox. Um, the second thing is we now have the ability to have what we call flexible sync options. Um, so, you know, Dropbox is great for syncing, but what about all the big media files that maybe you want to access, but you can't sync across your devices because maybe you got a small SSD in your laptop, for example. Um, with Dropbox, it's sort of the all or nothing model. You know, you either can see it and access it and you're syncing it or it doesn't exist. Um, and so they do give you the flexibility to do it on a folder by folder basis, but what if you need to get to one of those folders that you're not syncing? It's kind of a kind of a pain and inconvenience. So we allow you to create two completely different folder types. The first is the sync folder. That's a default behavior. But you can right-click now on any folder and change it to what, or basically what we call move to transporter library. So we're now going to have this new concept in version 2.0 of this transporter library, which is going to be a collection of folders that are only stored on your transporter. So as soon as you do that, you still have access to it. You still can share it with anybody you want. But the beauty is it's not going to sync all those files across all your devices. So movie collection, music collection, photo collection, perfect use case for putting in the transporter library. Um, you can share it, you can access it, but you don't have to sync it across all your devices. 
So we think that that really kind of bridges the best of both worlds for people. So we've got the same capability of the cloud that people love, and we've got this ability to have large collections of files you can access similar to you know, some of the cloud-based NAS devices that are really popular. Um, so that's the big second thing we've done. Third is we've revamped the iOS um, app to work with version 2.0. Sounds trivial, but it actually required quite a bit of work. But most importantly, we've now, we're now introducing our Android app as well. Um, so a lot of folks out there, I mean, I realize this is a Mac community and we all love our iPhones, um, but a lot of people maybe have an Android in the family or something. Um, so that's just an added convenience, but, uh, you know, but there are a lot of people that are on the Android platform as well. Um, you know, so the great thing about it, when you think about it in the concept of having those, um, those transporter folder, the folders in the transporter library, is you literally now can have up to terabytes of data per transporter you can access from any mobile device. Um, and we feel like with those two, with the iOS and now Android, we cover you know, the vast majority of the mobile, mobile world that people want to be able to do. Um, and the fourth thing we've done is, you know, with version 1.0, we could get through probably 95% of all firewalls. Um, and that was a pretty good attempt for the first one. But what we found is if people were maybe buying two transporters, putting one at home, and then one at work, and that work had some sort of enterprise-type firewall, that there might be some connectivity issues trying to connect to that second transporter. So what we've done is we've made some enhancements in how we communicate with the devices, and we feel like we're going to be able to get through pretty much virtually any firewall now. Um, so that's just going to what that's going to result in is a better overall user experience. You know, they're going to be able to connect to their transporter no matter where they are. They're going to be able to put it anywhere they want without worrying about firewalls. Um, like I said, it was it was pretty good before 90, 95 percent, but now it's going to be much closer to 100 percent. Um, and so that's what we got coming in version 2.0. We're, we're pretty excited about it. Obviously, it's going to be a free upgrade for all of our early adopters that are current version 1.0 uh, users. And so we're really excited to get it in their hands in the next few weeks and see what they think about it. You, you answered about a dozen of my questions already, but let me circle back and make sure that sure. I have a lock on this. And since we've had, you've been on the show a couple times, um, Jeff was on the show at Macworld, and, and I want to make sure we give everyone an accurate picture. Yep. Okay, so so we have. I mean, you you've addressed a biggie here for me because I don't necessarily want to, with an SSD equipped Mac, I don't want to have a folder that duplicates everything that's on the transporter. I'd, I'd almost like what in Mac parlance we might say were our aliases, so that I'm not taking up all that space. And it sounds like that's what you've implemented now. I can yeah. share forty. I can put forty movies on my transporter at three gigs each. Yep. But they're not taking up my space. It's just I can access them anytime I want to by downloading them. That, and that's the beauty, right? So, I mean, I literally use that. I just traveled last weekend with the family, and I had a new movie I wanted to watch, and I did exactly that. I sat in the airport on the wireless, downloaded it to the mobile device, and watched it on the flight. So, I mean, that's a that's a perfect use case. Um, and, yeah, we think, we think that's going to be huge because – that's a big limiting factor for a lot of the cloud services today that you have to either sync it or you can't even get to it. Right. So the Dropbox, uh, excuse me, the, the Dropbox-like behavior for the synced folder, mm -hmm. uh, is that, uh, does that folder then get synced to all my Dropbox folders oh, on, I'm sorry, all my transporter folders on all my machines as well as all my transporter devices? Yeah, that's right. So any synced folder um, is going to automatically be synced with any device that's running the app. Now, obviously, with mobile, we don't automatically sync. We give you the access, and you can selectively download and you know and, and access the files that you want. Um, but in terms of computers, desktop computers that are running our application, you know, if if you have a synced folder, we'll be synced across those devices. So Mac, PC, uh, you know, iMac at home, and MacBook Pro for the road, whatever whatever your configuration is going to be. You download and install our free software, you log into your account, and you're automatically going to have that just like Dropbox. Along the way with the 1.0 version as it's developed, you did remove the necessity of having a second transporter. You let me share sure. information sure. across. Any enhancements here for those of us who do have two transporters, uh, other than just everything we've talked about? Do we now have effectively double the storage? Uh, because now... I guess we're syncing, well, I can have multiple transporters, so I can have them syncing multiple data sets? Yeah, so, I mean, really the nice thing about transporter, and this was true in version 1, so it really hasn't changed too much for version 2, um, but when you create a folder, you have the ability to determine which transporters that folder resides on. Um, and so when people say, wow, I'm limited to 2 terabytes, 
um, you know, we're only limited by the drive size, and we're only limited by the drive size you can put in a single transporter. The way that our software works is you can have multiple transporters. You know, in your case, two, um, somebody could have five or ten transporters. And the beauty is they're just going to see one transporter folder that contains all the files stored across all their transporters. Um, as an administrator, you probably want to know which transporter stores what and how much redundancy you have, and you can totally do that. But it's, it's up to you whether you want a folder to sit on four transporters or you want it to just sit on one transporter. Um, so effectively, if you didn't care about redundancy, which I think most of us do, but if you didn't, just for example, you could have two transporters with, with absolutely no folders being synced between them, so you effectively have four terabytes of storage now. And they could be located in different locations. It doesn't matter where the transporters are. But again, you're just going to see that one folder view of all your folders and files. Yeah. The more I learn, the more I'm loving this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just, well, we'll talk about some of the key benefits of transporter in, in a second. But sure. the idea that now... I don't have to, it sounds like I don't have to be connected to my home network where my home transporter is as much as I did before. I, that We've gotten away from that. But now, unfortunately, we have to keep using the Dropbox thing because that's what the most people are familiar with. Now, it's like I have my own private Dropbox service, a la transporter, without anybody ever, anybody else ever touching my data. Yeah. And, you know, and I don't, I don't know that we're, um, look, we, a lot of us here use Dropbox. We love Dropbox. I should say we're using it a lot less, um, you know, but it is a great product. I mean, let's face it, Dropbox has set the standard on ease of use. Um, they've really kind of blazed the trail there. Um, and people love Dropbox. You'll never hear us talk bad or poorly about Dropbox um, because we were fans and we think they did a great job. But what, what we like to say is, is, you know, where Dropbox maybe solves a small part of your storage problem and what you want to be able to do with your files today, Transporter can give you a similar experience but solve a lot more problems for you. Um, just the fact that now you have terabytes of capacity, um, you know, without having to pay hundreds of dollars, you know, every year, um, as in the case, you know, with, with Dropbox and similar services. Um, you know, we just think people – so here's the question, Chuck, right? I think if you ask most of your listeners, uh, if, if Dropbox were completely private and unlimited, would you use it for more stuff? Every, almost everybody would say yes. Um, you know, and if Dropbox was private and unlimited, we wouldn't have a business model. <laughs> um, but that's the benefit that we bring is, is you know, where we all love Dropbox. Um, we just wish it was a little bit more. I think that's what Transporter is able to deliver. You know, it's just more of everything. And it allows you to do much more with it because of that. Um, you know, no file size limitations, um, you know, no monthly fees that increase. You just buy another transporter that costs you, you know, a couple hundred bucks plus the cost of the drive. Um, and you got more storage when you're out of space and you just, you know, are still managing a single folder. Um, so we think, we like to think that we took all the good stuff with Dropbox and merged it with everything you like about, you know, external storage um, and just kind of put together a great product combining the benefits of those, those two products without any of the, you know, any of the drawbacks. And now, a word from Smile, the makers of the brand new PDF Pen 6 and PDF Pen Pro 6, the best utility for working with PDF documents. As good as PDF Pen and PDF Pen Pro were, PDF Pen 6 and PDF Pen Pro 6 are better. And now, both are even better with the recent update to version 6.0.2. Smile has added the option to toggle autosave and versions, has cut way down on memory usage, respects document permissions for the insert page numbers function, and lots more. And all that is on top of the ability to export PDFs to Microsoft Word, a new editing bar, retina display optimization, drag and drop to reorder library items, the list just goes on and on. Whether you get PDF Pen 6 or PDF Pen Pro 6 from the Smile website, or PDF Pen 6 or PDF Pen Pro 6 in the Mac App Store, go get PDF Pen or better yet, PDF Pen Pro. And don't forget about PDF Pen for iPhone and PDF Pen for iPad. PDF Pen is the essential utility for working with the PDFs you encounter every day. Thanks to Smile for their support of Mac Voices. Well, Jim, a lot of us have talked about putting, wanting to put our entire documents folder in our Dropbox so it's everywhere, synced all, all at once on every, every computer. That's what now you're giving me the option to affordably do and reasonably do with Transporter. And oh, by the way, you're adding in 
the security of not having my data stored on someone else's server. So this is just like a no-brainer win-win all the way around. Yeah, we think so. I mean, yeah, obviously the customers will will be the ultimate judges on version 2.0, um, but we've taken a lot of their feedback uh, into account. And, and quite honestly, I think, I think existing users are really going to love the changes we've made. And somebody who's a new user, uh, especially if they're coming from a Dropbox, um, as a Dropbox user, um, they're going to love it right away because it's just going to look really familiar to them. So let's see. We have four major major things going on here, um, and you, I, I, I like the fact that you're moving over to Android too. I mean, because let's face it, this is not a zero sum game. I'm I'm not a big fan of Android, but there are plenty of people out there that are using the devices. This just makes the transporter even more usable because now I can share that information seamlessly with whatever device I have, or for that matter, with whatever device anyone else has. Yeah, and I mean it's it, it's probably less about. Um, us maybe and more about the people we might want to share with or, or give access to because I think even though a lot of us aren't going to be Android users that are listening to the show um, you know other, a, a lot of a lot of us are going to know somebody that probably is using an Android um, and it just reduces another layer of friction with trying to you know share files with those people I think so that'll, it, it'll be a welcome addition um, it's going to be a great app um, you know and, and Android you know, even though I don't personally use it, a lot of people love it. So it's definitely something that we wanted to support. Now, you mentioned that this is a free upgrade for existing uh, connected data transporter users. How do we get it? Do we have uh, a manual process we have to go through, or is it going to be pushed out to our transporters? So the, the firmware will be pushed out automatically, um, and you'll be notified. Um, uh, you'll, you'll Depending on how you've configured your desktop software, um, if you if you've got it set for automatic updates, it'll it'll happen automatically. But if you've got it set up to notify you, you'll just get a little a uh, little growl notification telling you that there's an update available. So we'll get pushed out to everybody. Obviously, we know the registered users because they had to create an account. We'll send them an email to give them a heads up that version 2.0 is available. And what we also want to do when we do that is we'll probably put out some educational videos that we would encourage people to watch um, because it's going to be a different experience. You know, if you put a lot of time into version 1.0. Um, it's going to be a new interface, right? So it's going to be like anything, anytime there's change. But I think once people see it, um, they're probably going to say what a lot of us have said, which is, you know, this is probably how it should have looked from, from version 1.0. But, um, yeah, I think, uh, so it, we're, you know, we absolutely want to, want to have a company, uh, and a philosophy where we're, we're giving people these great new benefits for free of charge. So, you know, that's something we did at Drobo a lot. We never charge for software updates. We have zero plans of doing that here. So when when the up when the upgrade happens, um, other than learning to use the new features, is there anything that I have to do with my data, or is it all going to be dropped into the the sync uh, model rather than the share share part of that folder? It depends how you had the folders configured before, because with version one you can do some selective caching, um, and so depending on how you had that configured, we'll try and make the right determination on how that should go. Um, if it's got a significant amount of quantity, we'll actually prompt you and ask you what you want to do with that folder um, before we go ahead and migrate it over. Because obviously what we don't want to have happen is we assume you want it all synced and, and then all of a sudden now you've got limited storage uh, devices that are, that are now full. That would be a nightmare. Um, so we're, uh, we're still working out exactly what we're going to do, but there will be some intelligence around that to make sure our customers have a good upgrade experience. That's that's terrific. That's terrific. Well, it sounds like it should be a pretty seamless kind of upgrade. We're all going to have some new capabilities, specific exciting capabilities. And if you're a Dropbox owner, you already know what a lot of those capabilities are. So, exactly. This just yeah. th this is a really exciting, at least for me, because I think of how I use my transporter now. And this just is going to make it more seamless. I mean, I'm, I'm already thinking about I'm going to move basically my documents folder into the sync Dropbox, and that means it'll be available everywhere. Yeah, absolutely. I encourage you to do it. So, I mean, they're, they're, if you're comfortable from a functionality standpoint using Dropbox for, for certain things, there's absolutely no reason you shouldn't use it for uh, Transporter now um, because functionally it's going to be identical. So... Um, uh, Mark just held up a sign for me. Uh, one, of the, one of the things we wanted to also mention is um, WWDC, um, because that's coming up here very soon, and there may be some people in your audience that are interested. So um, one of the things that we're going to be doing is we're actually going to be sponsoring the alt-WWDC conference that's going on. 
And so we'll be up there and we're going to be releasing um, APIs to all the different platforms um, so that if somebody has an exciting application that they've developed, whether it's iOS or macOS, uh, they want to be able to use Transporter for the back end storage just like they would Dropbox. Um, we've got the APIs in there to be able to do that. Um, yeah, so we're, we're, gonna, we're pretty excited about that. That's one of the things we've always been focused on is how do we allow people to take Transporter and do fun and exciting things with it like they've done with Dropbox. And so we've had the API since day one, but we're just kind of formalizing the developers program. And so we're going to have some exciting announcements around WWDC as well. I tell Mark he's he's taking my questions from me because I did want to ask that, and you just answered it, that you know this would seem like the next logical progression. And if, if you're making these announcements now, what a perfect time. Um, we've talked to Judy and Rob um, and, and hope to do so again uh, as we tape this. Uh, about all WWDC, I plan to be there to do some interviews, so it'll be good to see you all there and getting the word out to the to the folks there because this just seems like again such a such a terrific terrific product. If I mean, if you're using the free version of any of the online storage services, great. Then you know if you're happy, fine. But if you're not, take a look at Transporter long before you start paying that annual fee. Because one, you know, one transporter, and you're set for a long, long time. Well, I mean, if you just think about like how, how much, how many pictures and and videos were taken on our phone now, um, it, it's crazy how fast you'd fill up even the largest free service that's available to you today. Um, and I'm constantly having to shuffle stuff around on my phone, and I hate it. Um, you know, so now to be able to have essentially unlimited storage on my mobile device and be able to get stuff up into my transporter. You know, it's just going to be, I think, huge for a lot of folks. So, yeah. So, we're, we're really excited about it. Version 2, I think, is going to be a great step forward for us as a company. Well, and the fact that you've, turned, you've made the hardware as you have so that I can start out with, with a, a 500, you know, 500 megs. I mean, that's – or a gig worth of storage. That's not small. But, you know, that – and then as I need to, if I want to swap out drives, I can put in then a – what is – what's maximum on a 2.5 drive now? Two terabyte? Two terabytes max today. So I can double my storage just by swapping out the drive and letting oh. it repopulate. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just like Drobo, one of the things people loved about Drobo, right, is you could buy any SATA drive. Um, and if you want to put a small one in now to meet your storage needs, then you can upgrade it later. Same thing with Transporter. We've taken that exact same model that people loved. Yeah. So I think part of this deal was also that there's going to be a little contest going on, as I remember. Uh, there is. Yeah. There is. Yeah. So we're going to be doing a little giveaway as well. So for your listeners, um, I don't have the URL handy, but I believe that you have it. I do. It is transporter.com slash V2MV, which is version 2 Mac Voices. So again, that's transporter.com slash V2MV. And I think you have to sign up uh, to, to win this before June 15th, right? Yeah, June fifteenth is expiration date, and it's actually file transporter. Just so people Excuse get to the right. file that's transporter. Okay. Just want to make sure they'll get a, they'll definitely get a four hundred four on that. Yeah, just <laughs> so file transporter just, just look down at the bottom of the screen, folks. I'll have it right here <laughs> in the lower <laughs> third and in the show notes, so you can just go there and click and go to the right place. Sorry about that. Perfect. Yeah, we're excited because you know every time we can get a, a product into somebody's hands, we've got a we've got a new passionate user and somebody who will hopefully tell other people about the product. So we're excited about doing that. Yeah, and that will win you a, a an empty transporter, meaning you have to supply the drive. But that means you can put in, you know, one of the, a drive you have sitting around right now to start getting a feel for it, or just jump right up and uh, and buy a two terabyte drive, and you'll have a two terabyte cloud service of your very own. There you go. There you go. Excellent. And of All course, right. as we just corrected to get more information, the website is filetransporter.com. That's where you can find out all the information. And pretty soon, uh, our friends in Europe will be able to do the very same thing. Yeah, we're excited about that. That's going to be huge. Well, Jim, it's, it's, thank you so much for the briefing. Um, will we see you in, at WWDC personally, or are you sending your minions? I will be there on Monday, um, and I think we'll have some other people there on Friday. I think those are the two key days that we'll be around. Um, so we got some we got some exciting stuff going on. We definitely want to get the word out to the developers that um, you know, if you've got an application that chews up a lot of storage and you're linking to Dropbox today, um, here's a really nice alternative you might want to look at for your application. So we're excited about getting the word out. 
Terrific, terrific. All right. Jim, it's great to see you. Thanks so much for the time, and good luck with the, the European launch, and we'll see you at WWDC. Sounds great. All right, thanks, Chuck. Thank you. Folks, I'm Chuck Joyner. Yes, I'm a happy transporter user. I hope you become one too, even if even if it's before the 2.0 software. Until the next time, this is Mac Voices, the talk of the Mac community. Thanks for watching. <laughs>